Onito Donaire. Your host, Mr. Fred Sternberg, will now begin. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Uh, on behalf of Top Rank, uh, welcome again to our second uh, media conference call in as many days for this terrific show. As most of you remember yesterday, we had a pretty enlightening conversation with Mike Alvarado and Brandon Rios talking about uh, their uh, battle coming up next week. And on the same card and in the main event, one of boxing's most exciting fighters, a top five pound-for-pound fighter and a four-division world champion, Nonito Filipino Flash Donaire will be uh, defending his WBO and IBF uh, junior featherweight titles in a unification fight with uh, Toshiaki Nishioka of Japan, uh, who holds the WBC um, diamond belt in the same weight division. Uh, joining us on the call today, in addition to uh, Nonito, is his manager Cameron Duncan, uh, his trainer, former world champion Robert Garcia, and to tell us a little bit more about the card, uh, Hall of Fame promoter Bob Arum. Bob? You call on me, Fred? Yes, yes Bob. Yeah. Well, I'm delighted to be uh, on this call. Uh, everybody who has any connection with boxing is excited about this card. Uh, the 122-pound uh, championship uh, title being defended by Nonito Donaire uh, is going to be a classic. I had the opportunity uh, to watch Toshiaki uh, Nishioka when he fought the Rafael Marquez in Las Vegas a little while ago, and he is a terrific fighter, and... Uh, uh, we know that uh, Nonito is one of the great uh, fighters uh, in boxing, uh, but he's going to have his hands full with uh, a tough competitor like Nishioka. So I really believe that this fight uh, with Donair and Nishioka uh, will be as exciting and as interesting as the co-feature with Brandon Rios uh, and Mike Alvarado. Hell of a night of boxing at the Home Depot. We've sold over 5,000 tickets. We're looking for a crowd of around 7,000, which will be a virtual sellout. Uh, so we're very, very excited. Thank you, Bob. And just a reminder for those who cannot make it to the Home Depot Center next Saturday night, it will be televised live on HBO at 10 p.m. East Coast time and 10 p.m. West Coast time uh, on delay. Um, joining us also uh, is manager Cameron Duncan. Cameron, uh, what's your view on this fight? I know, uh, you know none of these fights that, um, that Nonito has at this point are going to be easy fights, and, uh, and Nishioka has quite a resume. What was your thinking going into uh, making this fight? Well, this is a fight that Nonito's wanted for a long time. It's a, it's a great fight. I mean, Nishok is a great, great champion. And these are the fights that really um, leave Nonito Donaire not only as, you know, uh, one of the greatest fighters fighting today, but also in history. So these are the kind of fights that, um, that um, you really get excited about because this is really, really a historical fight. Thank you. And, uh, Robert, uh, you're, you're no stranger to the big fights, either as a fighter or a trainer. Looking at the, um, at the films that you've seen of, of him, what, uh, what do you anticipate uh, Nonito uh, facing next weekend? Robert? Well, we're having a little problem with Robert's line, so let's go straight to the star of the hour here. Nonito, give us your thoughts on the fight coming up, please. Okay, Fred, are you there? Yeah, who's that, Robert or Nonito? Yeah, here's Robert. Here's Robert. Yeah, Robert, can you, uh, I think we need to find you in a better background, but can you tell us a little bit what you're expecting from uh, uh, Nonito's opponent? You know what? Uh, Nishioka is a great fighter. Uh, he's, you know, not the one to fight the best in this division, and uh, Nishioka is, is, is ranked uh, as the best uh, super banner one in the world. So we expect a really tough fight, but Nonito, Nonito's been training very hard, and uh, it's in great shape to come out and perform and do, do what he's done before. Thank you. Nonito, uh, your thoughts, how training camp's been going, and, and what you anticipate next week? Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us how training camp has gone and what you anticipate next week? 
Our training camp's been excellent. You know, um, we've, we've had our last flying yesterday, and it's so great. Our, men- our mentality, we're just ready physically, mentally, just everything for this fight. And we expect a big fight next week, and, you know, we, we're expecting to, to, uh, to put our game plan uh, in the works for next week and, and come out of this fight like victorious, you know. Michel is a tough guy, but, you know, I think we have a great plan going to this fight. Terrific. Jeremy, let's open up the, the lines for questions, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question at this time, please press the number one key on your phone. Again, press the number one key on your phone to ask a question. And please wait a moment while questions come into queue. Okay, the first question will come from Dan Raphael with ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Nonito, how are you? Good, Dan. How are you doing? Everything is good. Looking forward to this show next week. I wanted to ask you, um, to, I, I, I agree with the things that Bob and uh, everybody has been saying. It's, a, it's an outstanding show, a good, good matchup. Um, I'll play devil's advocate for just a minute here. I look at Nishioka. He's a little bit older. He's 36. He hasn't fought for, it will be by the time he gets into the ring with you, a little bit over a year since his last fight. Do you kind of look at him maybe like you're going to be getting him at the right time because he is a little bit older and he hasn't had much activity for the last few years? Well, I think that um, um, being older and being a veteran, I think that you can get – the rush is never as bad as, as it is. You know, I think that he's going to come out there, he's training really hard for this fight, and we don't want to take any chances at all. I mean, I believe that, you know, when you're at this level, when you're, when you're at that age, you know, fighting, um, in, in, fighting in that. You know, even if you haven't fought in a while, you, you can you can get back really fast because of the fact that you have the experience, you know, to do so. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to ask you about is, uh, you know, you've been winning consistently. You've been pretty much dominating, whether it was Matabula or Wilfredo Vasquez, a shutout against Arvias. Uh, but their last real spectacular performance that you had, you had that great knockout of the year against Montiel in early 2011. So it's now been three fights in a row with, uh, you know, solid wins against solid opponents, but not the, of the spectacular nature that I think some people, you know, are maybe spoiled and have come to expect from you. Do you, do you put any pressure on yourself? I know you want to win, obviously, but do you put any pressure on yourself at all to make it a little bit more spectacular than the last three victories have been? Well, you know, I mean, we, we, we just train our best and, um, you know, we, we gained the victory and I think that's what's gotten most. But, you know, again, it's fact that these guys are, are you know, world champions and, and you know, they're, they're, they're on top of their game and uh, sometimes you don't get the, the, you know, the, the things that people expect. But because of the fact that I'm one of the top guys, they expect a lot from me. And, you know, we're changing up a lot of the styles to, to, to get something more exciting for the fans um, to gain more uh, for this fight. But, you know, definitely with show that we can't let our guard down. Um, we, we are working with everything, you know, going back to the old style of Bonita there being smart. Right. I mean, this guy hasn't been stopped since his second professional fight, which was, you know, in 1995. So, I mean, it's been a long time stopping the fourth round of a four-round fight. So, other than that, he's got a few losses along the way, but all decisions, you know, against top opponents. Um, how much would it would it say for you then if you could, you know, even just get him on the on the you know get a knockdown against this guy because he is such a, a strong veteran against you know a lot of good opponents. You know, we we when it comes it comes, but I think with the proper game plan, you know, things will set up. My power will be more dominant when it comes to being set up. You know, um, that's what I was known for is is the is the lightning fast um, counters. That, that was knocking people out, not not because they saw it. If they saw it, they were able to brace it. And I think that was going back into uh, who I was, and then that was being unexpected. And I think that when, no matter how tough you are, when, when a punch is, is being unexpected, you can't see it where it's coming from. You're going to feel it, and you might go down. Robert, could you address that for just a minute about uh, 
your your desire to see Nonito not only just not only win but also to to put on that sort of spectacular performance that he had against Montiel a few fights ago. Well, we we, we all gotta know, you know, that uh, Nonito has moved up in weight. The fighters are bigger, the fighters are stronger, and they've all been world class fighters. So it it all has to. It's getting more difficult. Uh, Nonito is the one coming up in weight. So these guys that have been doing it for for years at that weight division, you know, so when we come, you know, talking about Vasquez and now Nishioka. So, so they are the the big guys, the ones that have been doing it for for years in the division. So, so it, it it won't be easy. But Nonito, this training camp he he did right. The push the push thing he told me when I when I when I started going to training camp is is I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna come back and fight the way the way I used to do it, the way I did it with Montiel, the way I did it with uh, Tyson Marquez. Uh, Federico, all those guys that he was, you know, just picking apart and little by little, knocking them out. Uh, he uh, he wants to do the same thing again, and he's doing it in training against lightweights, junior uh, junior lightweights, lightweights, uh, uh, super lightweights. He he's been landing beautiful punches, beautiful combinations, and I have no doubt that he will do it uh, against Nishioka and 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 perform very well. I am not I am not pushing or asking for the knockout. I want him to perform well, look good, do what he did in training because. He he came out with a perfect uh, game plan how to do it and and he was doing it during sparring and and when I was there seeing that uh, happening you know I'm pleased with 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 uh, his performance even though he does not come out I know that he, that he you know in his mind and fans want to see that but if he performs well and just does what he what he did in training I'll be happy with him. Very good, thank you guys very much. I will uh, I'll see you next week in LA. Look forward to this one. Okay, the next question is from Colin Seymour with examiner.com. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Nonito, what would be um, Nishioka's strategy for beating you? How does he think he can get the job done, would you imagine? Well, one thing that I can see him doing is he's landing that, that straight, but, you know, that's a very, very, very difficult thing to land with me. Um, but aside from that, you know, I... I haven't really seen anything in the tape that can, uh, that can, uh, you know, do something. I mean, I mean, there's, I mean, he did a great job with, with Marquez, but Marquez was a lot slower than I am. Um, so a lot of those punches will, won't be, won't land uh, with me, but he does have power and, and, you know, and, uh, and that's probably the things that, that he can do is he land and set up his straight, but, you know, we're very wary and we're very mindful of of, of his of his uh, advantage. How much is his being a southpaw a problem for you? It's not so bad. I mean, I've I've gotten used to sparring a lot of southpaws throughout the years, and you know, Darchinian was was uh was was one of the southpaws that was notable in in you know in knocking him out um, that people saw, and and Marquez, Tyson Marquez as well was one of the guys that, that, you know, that I took apart um, when I did decide to turn uh, orthodox. And, and you know, South Florida are they can do the same thing as me, so I'm more, I'm really, really mindful of that and, and aware that uh, they can do the same thing with me. And, and you know, and and I try to do the things that was difficult for me against the South Park to them. So, you know, um, that's one thing that we figured out. Good luck on the 13th. Thank you. The next question Thank is you. from Bob Vellin with USA Today. Please go ahead. Hey, Nonito. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, drug testing that you've submitted to. Uh, how is that going, that program? It's good. It's good. Actually, a couple of days ago, they showed up and, and knocked in, in my door. You know, they took four tubes of blood I saw the last time they only took two, but they do all kinds of random testing. You never know when they when they'll come when they'll come in. And uh, you know, I think that I I'm you know, I'm I'm really I really believe in it, you know. Um I think that it's good for boxing, it's good for, for the sport that I love, which is boxing, you know. Um and you know, it's 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 just it's random, so you can't really hide anything at all. Uh, with with some of the problems we've had with positive tests lately from other boxers, uh, do you do you think this is something that's going to become uh, future in boxing? I think it should. I think that it should be part of boxing because um, 
you know, I mean, for me, it doesn't matter to me because I do the things that I do because of my fans and because of the love of the sport and, and you know, and for myself as well. But if it does, I mean, it'd be good. I think it'll, it'll be it'll be good if, if people are there and, and, you know, it'll definitely help out boxing. And if it becomes part of boxing, you know, there, there's nothing that, that boxing will lose out of it except, um, you know, except only gain fans and, and, and know that boxing is a, is a true sport and a real sport it, it, it when it comes to fairness and clean. Um, I, I know you don't like to talk about the future, but uh, if, if you get by Nishioka, uh, where do you see yourself heading, say, a year from now? Well, you know, we, we want to fight as much as we can in, in this 122 pounds, but... You know, moving up to 126 is, is also another uh, another um, option that we have. You know, um, we've got to prepare my body for it. But we're looking around around staying in 122 for a bit. But if not, you know, I can work my body to to, to be able to withstand uh, and and be comfortable at 126. Is there anybody at 122 uh, at this point that you'd like to face that you haven't at this point? Anybody that I haven't faced at this point is, is okay with me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press the number one key on your phone. The next question is from Lim Satterfield with The Ring. Please go ahead. Hey, Nomito. How you doing? Hey, Lim. How you doing? Bless. Bless. And uh, Robert, how are you? Good, man. Good. Hey, um, for both of you, when a guy gets at this level in his career, he's he's a crafty guy. I mean, this guy hasn't lost in over eight years. He's at a point where he's facing a young, up and coming fighter, and he's a crafty guy. Guys like you know Bernard Hopkins, um, you know Mike McCallum, they're really tough to get out of there, and they're crafty. Um, have you watched anything in the films, Robert and, and Nonito, where you really feel like this guy is going to really bring it and do everything he possibly can to beat you, frustrate you? You, you guys studied that in any way? Look, yeah, he, this guy, this guy is, is very experienced, and like you just said, you know, he's one of those guys that that been in it for so many years and got so much experience when. He's done everything with with every type of opponent, but uh, but inside the ring he hasn't been inside the ring against against Anonito. Anonito who who thinks the way he thinks has the power that he has, uh, speed that he has. He hasn't seen that, and and that's what's gonna make the difference. Uh, Anonito has got tremendous power and tremendous speed. And one thing that I really I really see in Anonito and admire because very few fighters have that. They 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 are so ahead of their opponent that they know. What's coming? They know what punches are coming, and Nonito is one of those guys. So this guy hasn't been in, in there with nobody like Nonito, and, the, and that's not make the difference. Now, Nonito, you had said to me that you think, I guess, kind of for the same reasons that I just named, that this guy could be the best guy in the division. He's been there. He's, he's going to really do everything he possibly can to win. In what ways do you see yourself being challenged? perhaps like you've never been challenged before? Uh, the thing is, you know, um, he does pose a threat in terms of his uh, of his decent speed, but his power, you know, he, he knows how to set that up, and that's what we're going to be uh, aware of. But, of course, he's, he's a veteran, and he knows the tricks, you know. He's been boxing for a long time, so he knows a lot of tricks that, that um, can frustrate a fighter, and, and that's what we don't want to fall into. Um but again, we have a great game plan, and you know we're just ready for it, no matter what it is. Your rise in weight, you fought Vasquez, you fought Mafabula, and in each of those two fights, you were challenged in different ways. You know, in the Vasquez fight, you had that hand injury, and you had to tough it out against the guy who was coming off of a loss and, and really putting it all out there. And then against Mafabula, all guys, Southpaw, who you know, you really had to dig in and, and land some critical punches against him. In those two fights together, do you think they helped with your transition into this type of fight in your third fight in this weight class? 
Definitely, you know, every fight makes you stronger. Every fight makes you tougher. And every every fight makes you smarter. So going through this fight, you know, you realize closer to how you want to fight, you know, how how you want to be and, and who you want to be in, inside that ring. And I've, 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 I've established that uh, mentality and knowing myself. And that's why I think that I, I know that I'm a better fighter going to this fight because of those fights. Just one more question about the Massapula fight. Um, that, was that fight everything that you thought it would be? Because I know going into it, you said you'd never fought me that call. He's 5'11". Um, he throws a lot of punches, and he did make significant contact. with what. In what way do you feel you improved, um, I guess, it's inside as a fighter? Well, you know, we um, we took it to him. You know, we showed power. We showed head movement. You know, the different uh, look for Donito Donaire. It wasn't it wasn't the same look. And um, even at that, we proved that even a taller guy, we can outspeed. You know, so um, even a longer, a long length arms were able to get by. So we we established a lot and learned a lot from this, that fight. That um, you know, we, we, we can bring into this fight as well. Leader, thanks a lot and good luck next week. Thank you. The next question is from Victor Salazar with the Boxing Voice. Please go ahead. How you doing, Onito? Uh, I just have two questions. Um, what ha- what has changed in this camp from the other camp that has you prepared mentally to go in there to not look for that knockout like you've had before, and, and to keep you focused to let the knockout come to you? So the last three fights um, was different and experimental, and you know it was getting to know myself. And uh, so in this fight, you know I'm going back to who I really am, and in terms of, of boxing being unexpected, um, you know, and and that's the, that's the difference between the cap is, is you know we relied a lot on the power on the last two fights. This time we're coming out there and, and fighting the way we were before. And the last question is, uh, do you feel any added pressure uh, being that the fight before you, you know, has the making of a fight of the year, that you have to go out there and make a statement, uh, you know, to let the critics know that, you know, no need to the is back and won't be overlooked by a possible fight of the year, Brandon Reynolds and Mike Alvarado? No, we, uh, we, I'll be watching that fight. I think that fight's a great fight. You know, for me, um, I just do the things that I need to do. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, I mean, fights like my fights don't usually will go five years, you know, but fights like, like Wheels and All Brothers will go five years because they fight and they make things, you know, bloody and exciting for everybody, you know. Um, but there's no pressure, you know. Uh, we, we just support. That's, that's pretty much what we do in this team. We support each other. That's it for me, no need. Good luck next Saturday, man. Thank you. The next question is from Robert Morales with LA Daily News. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, everybody. How's it going, Nonito? Good. Hey, hey, man. Listen, um, I know you don't. I know you don't like to look ahead, but I want, if I may, I wanted to ask you one question that would involve uh, looking ahead, if I may. Um, uh, assuming you and Abner Morris both get past these next two, you know, fights that you guys have. Uh, a lot of people think Abner is kind of like you, one of the, the very best in the Super Bantamweight division. Is a fight with Abner Morris something you would like down the road, assuming everything continues to go well for you? I hope so. You know, I, I'm hoping that, that fights like those uh, will be able to fight, you know, but that really depends on their promoter, my promoter, the network, you know. So, um, that, that's, just, that's just how it is. But we are always willing to fight anybody. And I knew that, and that's why I asked. I mean, no, Morris feels the same way. So, needless to say, I think we'd all like to see that happen at some point. All right, thank, thank you, man. You. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Fred. Yeah, Jeremy, any more questions on you? Or? I knew he was going to want to talk. He was getting drunk. 
Well, I guess we'll go around the horn here. Uh, Bob, any last statements uh, before we sign off? Just everybody who loves boxing, come out to the Home Depot next Saturday, the 13th, because they're going to see a card second to none. I mean, two great, great fights, terrific undercard, tickets of price, very, very reasonably. And indeed, almost all the tickets are sold except for the $35 tickets. And we have uh, some of those available. So for 35 bucks, you can watch history. And just a reminder, uh, meeting in the Southern California area next week, um, all four fighters, Nonito, uh, Nishioka, um, uh, as well as... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Um, Brandon Rios. Brandon Rios and Mike Alvarado, thank you. We'll be doing a, uh, a media workout at Fortune Gym in L.A. starting at noon on Wednesday. Uh, Robert Garcia, any final uh, comments, please? Uh, you know what? I just want to thank everybody for the support. I know tickets are selling really good, and, uh, you know, this is going to be two exciting fights. So we're glad, uh, we're glad that we got... Uh, our, our 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 fighters, Cameron Duncan did his job. Bob Brown did his, and uh, we're going to have a great show. Thank thank you all for your support. Thank you, Robert. We'll leave the last word to Nonito. Nonito. Oh, uh, thank you guys for being here and all the. Uh, it's just exciting for me, um, Bob. Thank you, you know HBO and everybody that that made this fight happen. Um, you know, just want to let everybody know out there, this is going to be an incredible, 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 incredible fight. It's a must see. I mean, you guys got. Uh, a candidate for fight of the year for this fight with Brandon Rios, and then you got the top guys of the 122 fighting and, and going all out because I know he'll go all out. I'll go all out. I'm ready for this fight, so excitement is in there. And October 13th, so check it out. And I well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank everyone for joining us today. I know uh, late on Friday it's tough to get everyone together, but uh, I thought it was a great call. And, uh, again, we'll see everybody at Fortune Gym in L.A. for the media workout next Wednesday at noon. And uh, don't forget to catch the fight live on HBO next Saturday night at 10 p.m. East Coast time. Thanks so much.